Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to join us for our very first ever Barrier Island live class here on Facebook. My name is Alyssa. I am one of the naturalists here at Barrier Island. I'd like to know who is joining us, so please say your name nice and loud so that I can hear you. Who's with us this morning? Well, it's very nice to meet you. Um, where are you watching from? We are just south of Charleston, South Carolina on Seabrook Island. Yeah, I know where that is. I've been there before. Cool. So like I said, we are so excited to have you guys here this morning. If you're one of those students that was supposed to come visit us here at Barrier Island, please just know we miss you so much. We wish that you could be here with us, but we're also very excited to be able to offer this to you guys instead of an actual trip to Barrier Island. So this morning we are going to be starting with a little taste of our herpetology class, which is where we introduce you to some of the animals that we have here with us at Barrier Island. And specifically today we're going to be focusing on our reptiles. So if you have any questions while you're watching, please be sure to make a comment or a question below and we'll get to those towards the end of the class. So this morning we're going to start with our very first reptile who I'm holding in my hands right here. A representative of the turtles and this is the yellow bellied slider. So the yellow bellied slider has a pretty obvious name. First of all you can see that the belly otherwise known as the plastron of the turtle is bright yellow but it's also called a slider because these turtles like to hang out on logs or on the banks of ponds, swamps, lakes, and rivers and when they see something coming you'll notice that they slide right off on their belly into the water. So our turtle here does carry its shell around on its back. This is its home and its protection. And if you've ever seen those cartoons where turtles get scared and they jump up out of their shells and they run away, that does not happen in real life. This little guy here was born with the only shell she's ever gonna have. So as she gets older, that shell just continues to grow with her. So there are several different types of turtles in the world. Um, and you can look at a turtle and kind of tell what kind of environment it lives on based off of its body. So our turtle here is what we call a freshwater turtle. This is a representative of turtles that are going to be living in ponds or lakes. And you can tell a couple of things about where she lives by looking at her body. So the first thing you can do is look at the shape of her shell. And you can see that it's very smooth across the top so that when she's swimming through the water, she doesn't run into any resistance from that water. This shape is what we call hydrodynamic. So just like an airplane or a bird or a rocket is shaped to move quickly through the air, and we call that aerodynamic, when we have animals that are shaped to move quickly through the water, we call that hydrodynamic. Another thing you can see about our little yellow-bellied slider here is that she is able to swim using webbed feet. So at the tip of her toes here, you can see that she's got webbing in between her toes, and that allows her to move water quickly out of the way and push herself forward. You can also notice those little claws at the end of her feet. So these are going to allow her to pull herself up onto land, either on a log or through the dirt. And it will also allow her to dig in the dirt to find food. So that is our turtle. Please remember, if you have any questions at all, just drop those in the comments and we will make sure that we answer those towards the end. Um, our next animal representative that we're gonna get a chance to meet is a snake. So over here, we have Miss Haley joining us, another awesome naturalist, and she has our greenish rat snake to show you guys today. So the greenish rat snake, kind of like the yellow-bellied slider, you can learn from its name just a couple of things about this animal. First, you can tell it's greenish in its color. You can also tell what it likes to eat. So by its name, I'm sure you guys could guess that this animal likes to eat rats. It likes to eat rodents. And you'll notice that it's kind of climbing up Miss Haley's arms. Um, that's for two reasons. First of all, Miss Haley is a lot warmer than this snake. So reptiles, everything that we're meeting today is cold-blooded or ectothermic, which means they can't provide their own body heat. They'll have to find that source of heat from somewhere else which is why you most often find snakes, turtles, lizards, and alligators hanging out in the sunshine trying to get warm. So Miss Haley is providing a source of warmth for this snake right now. Another reason that this snake will be climbing up her arms is because it's a tree climbing snake. So you would most often find this kind of snake climbing up a tree. And this snake is totally safe for us to be handling. This is a non-venomous snake, which means it's not going to be able to hurt her. 
You can tell in the southeastern United States whether or not you're looking at a venomous or a non-venomous snake a couple of different ways. And remember, this is just for the southeastern United States. So here at Barrier Island, probably where a lot of you guys are watching from, but if you're in a different part of the world, these rules might not apply. So the first thing that you can do is look at the shape of the head of the snake. And if you're looking at a venomous snake, you're gonna notice that the snake has a triangular shaped head with some puffy cheeks, which is where it holds that venom. A non-venomous snake is going to have more of an oval shaped head that's about the same width as the rest of its body. You can also look at the pupil of the snake to be able to tell whether or not it is venomous. So a non-venomous snake will have a black circular shaped pupil, a lot like the pupil of human beings. Um, while venomous snakes are going to have a pupil that's more like a cat eye, sort of football shaped. Another thing that you can look at is the body shape of the snake itself. So our greenish rat snake here, although it might not look like it all curled up together, is almost as long as Haley is tall. So he's about five feet long. And to be such a long snake, he's relatively skinny. So non-venomous snakes tend to have a body shape that is longer and thin because in order to kill their prey, they actually have to wrap their bodies all the way around their prey and squeeze or constrict in order to kill that animal before they can swallow it. A venomous snake does not have to do that because it has venom. All it has to do is bite its prey, wait for it to die, and then swallow its prey. So they tend to be shorter and thicker. So that is our snake friend there. Please remember if you have questions about any of these animals or something we haven't talked about, please make sure you leave those in the comments below and we'll get to those towards the end. So for our last animal, um, David here is joining us with the American alligator. So we have a juvenile American alligator here with us. You can tell it's a juvenile for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's small. So this is a smaller alligator probably no older than about a year and a half to two years, because as alligators grow, they grow about a, a foot for every year that they are alive. But another way that you can tell is by looking at the color of this alligator. So when American alligators are mature adults, they're gonna be completely black or dark, dark brown because they are living in swamps and ponds with murky, dark water. Now this little guy here has some of those stripes on its back that are kind of a tannish brown color. And that provides some camouflage for our American alligator. You might be wondering why an alligator needs camouflage because alligators are top predators. But when they're this small, there are other animals out there that might wanna eat this guy like a big turtle or a bird or even a larger alligator. So this alligator uses that camouflage to protect itself at the edge of those ponds and swamps and blend in with the mud and pieces of sticks and leaves. Now our alligator here also has another adaptation that allows it to survive well in the water. So if you look closely at the eye of the alligator, you might notice that it has two sets of eyelids. So human beings only have one set of eyelid. Our eyes blink up and down. You can practice that right now at home, up and down. But the American alligator, just like other crocodilians, has what we call a nictitating membrane, which is a second eyelid, which moves from side to side or left to right. And what this does for our alligator is it acts like a pair of goggles. So if you're gonna be swimming around in water that's filled with pieces of sticks and leaves and dirt, you don't want those things to get into your eyes and scratch your eye or make it so that you can't see. So the alligator can actually cover its eye with that eyelid swim around and still be able to see underneath the water. So please remember if you guys have questions, uh, we will be answering those towards the end. So if you have any questions about these animals, let us know. I think it's about time for us to answer any of those questions that you might have. Um, so Ms. Abigail behind the camera is gonna help us out with that. Um, we, our first question is, what is the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? Mr. David, could you answer that for us, please? Yeah, so there are various differences even though they're both related to each other, they're both in the crocodilian group of reptiles. Um, alligators and crocodiles are found in different parts of the world. Here in the United States, we have one species of alligator, the American alligator, and we have one species of crocodile, the American crocodile. Now, the way to tell them apart is usually by looking at their heads. 
So if we look at this alligator's head, you'll notice that it's round shaped uh, or U shaped if you from up up. On a crocodile, the snout is going to be V shaped or triangular shaped and a little bit thinner. Now on this individual alligator, it's hard to tell, but whenever he, because his mouth is open right now, but whenever he closes his mouth, you'll notice that the upper teeth from the upper jaw are the ones that are showing. The lower teeth are going to hide behind the upper teeth uh, when the mouth is closed. But on a crocodile, both the upper and lower teeth are going to show at once. So it almost looks like the crocodile needs a little bit of braces. Okay, thank you for answering that question for us. Um, Miss Haley, um, we've got a quick question about how long can snakes grow? Do you have any idea about that? Um, well, there are a lot of different types of snakes in the world. Um, Mr. David, do you know what the longest one is? So the longest snake in the world is the reticulated python, which can grow uh, more than 33 feet in length. Wow, that's huge. All right, um, we've got another question about why is the skin of reptiles different? Would anybody like to answer that for us? Different than what? Other, um, types, of other types of reptiles. So why, why do we see a little bit of variation in the, the type of skin oh, there? Yeah, so the type of skin of reptiles varies depending on where the reptile lives and how his lifestyle is. So for example, a turtle is going to have a harder shell, which uh, does have scales on them. We call those scutes and they do shed over time. Now these are going to be smooth because the, the turtle needs to be able to swim very well. Same thing with snakes. Snakes have scales all over their bodies, which are also, depending on the species, smooth. And this scale allows them to um, move better out through their stomach. Remember, snakes don't have any legs, so they need to have those smooth scales to be able to move a little bit better, uh, depending if you're swimming or you're climbing a tree. Now for this guy, the crocodiles and alligators, they have smooth scales on the bottom of their bellies to help them slide a little better uh, on the banks of rivers going back into the water. But on top, if you were to feel it, it'll feel very rough and bumpy. Uh, these scales on the top allow the alligator to be a little bit more protected because if an attack is gonna come on the alligator, it'll be from the top. They also have things on top of their of their scales here, um, you see these little bumps. Maybe you can see a little closer on the mm -hmm. camera. Uh, those bumps are actually bones, and they're called osteoderms. Those osteoderms have a lot of blood vessels on them, and since they're all on the top of the gator, they allow the gator to sunbathe and also get a lot of sun in them to get more energy. So they're like mini solar panels right on the alligator. Very cool. Um, we've got a question about why is the little alligator's mouth open right now? Yeah, so right now he um, is just trying to be to protect himself. Gators, the best way that they can do that is through their mouth. And so he has his mouth open, and uh, if I were to get near him, he might bite to protect himself. But he is in no harm right now, and he actually is very comfortable. The way I'm holding him um, allows him to, to have all his body supported in my hands. Therefore, he doesn't feel like he's going to fall or anything like that. All right. Um, Miss Haley, could you tell us the difference between um, a poisonous snake and a venomous snake? Yes. So we aren't going to have any poisonous snakes. So poison is something that you have to ingest and venom gets in. So if you ate something poisonous and it made you sick, that would be poison. And if something bit you and that made you sick, that would be venom. All right, thank you. Um, Mr. David, do you happen to know what is the smallest snake in the world? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I don't believe I know the exact species of snake that's smallest, but there are snakes that are called worm snakes, and they're very tiny. Um, I, don't, I don't know which specific worm snake is the smallest, but those would be the group of snakes that are the smallest. Oh, very cool. All right, Miss Alyssa, um, we've not gotten to talk any more about turtles right now. Uh, so you've got a little turtle here, the yellow-bellied slider. It's native to South Carolina, right? Yes, it is. Um, could you tell us about some other turtles that are native to the state of South Carolina? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we have other representatives of the freshwater turtle category that are native to our state, including one that I think a lot of people like, which is the common snapping turtle. Um, we also have some representatives of the terrestrial turtle family, um, so turtles that are going to be spending most of their time on land, like the eastern box turtle or the gopher tortoise. Um, and we have representatives of the exclusively 
ocean turtles, the sea turtles, which are my favorite type of turtle. Um, the most common sea turtle that we have here in South Carolina is actually our state reptile, the loggerhead sea turtle. But we can also find leatherback sea turtles, green sea turtles, and even sometimes Kemp's Ridley sea turtles off our coast. Wow, that's a lot of different types of turtles. Um, are we allowed to have here in our facility, can we have any sea turtles? We cannot. They are protected by law. It's actually a federal offense for people without special permission from the government and other organizations protecting turtles um, to have them. So you're not even supposed to have a sea turtle shell um, or the shell of a sea turtle egg. Um, all parts of the turtle, whether the turtle is alive or dead, um, are completely protected. And that includes sea turtle nests as well. Um, do you happen to know how fast an average turtle can swim? The average turtle, it's not really, that's hard because it really does depend on the species of turtle. Um, with a sea turtle though, you could be looking at 15, 20 miles an hour. Definitely spin, swim faster than you can swim. That's Mr. Sure. David, did you have some insights on how fast a turtle can swim? Uh, I think Miss Alyssa is kind of around the, the same ballpark there. Uh, I'm not really sure. I've never measured one. <laughs> <laughs> we, could, we could go find one and measure it. Yeah. Um, are there any land turtles that are endangered? Any land turtles that are endangered. Mm -hmm. um, the gopher tortoise is one such land turtle that is endangered. Um, and part of the reason for that is because their habitats and the forests that they live in um, are endangered. People are cutting down trees and destroying the dirt where they like to burrow and live and to lay their nests. Okay. Um, Mr. David, we've got a question about how big can an alligator get? Well, that's a very good question now. Alligators um, can grow to about 18 feet in length. The males can grow to that uh, size. Now, it's very hard to find one that big. Uh, usually, when you find a very old alligator, they're going to be about 12 feet in length. Um, that's because as they age, their growth um, starts to diminish. So they, when, as I was saying, that uh, when they're this young, they'll grow about a foot a year. As they get older, they'll start to only grow about a few inches to maybe even just centimeters. So um, you can tell how old it is by what the size is. Now, females will be a lot smaller than males. They can grow up to 9 feet to 10 feet at their max. Mm -hmm. um, so you mentioned the difference between crocodiles and alligators earlier that Alligators have a rounded snout and crocodiles have a more V-shaped snout. Is there a difference in the size of an alligator versus a crocodile? So here in the U.S. there isn't. So both the American alligator and the American crocodile are about the same size. But around the world, there's only two species of alligator. The American alligator and the, Ameri and the Chinese alligator. And the American alligator is the larger of the two. Uh, there are a lot of species of crocodiles still. And the largest crocodile ever is the saltwater crocodile. Uh, and it also happens to be the largest reptile in the world. Where would we find a saltwater crocodile? Salt, saltwater crocodile is, is found in the Indonesian part of the world in Australia. If you ever watched the crocodile hunter, that was a saltwater crocodile. All right. Miss Haley, um, you have a greenish rat snake, is that right? Yes. Are there other colors of rat snake? There are. There are also. Um, yellow rat snakes, black rat snakes, and red rat snakes. And the greenish rat snake that I have here is thought to be a uh, breeding of the yellow and the black rat snakes. Mm -hmm. Does your rat snake eat anything other than rats? It does. Well, it's mostly going to uh, be eating rodents. It might also, <clears throat> excuse me, it might also eat smaller birds, eggs, um, frogs, and even lizards. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right, back to Mr. David. Um, are alligators more aggressive than crocodiles? So any animal, when provoked, is going to defend itself and, and try to uh, attack. And crocodilians are very instinctive animals. And whenever uh, people get in, into close proximity with them, if the animal has been fed, it's going to attack. Whether it is an alligator or a crocodile, it just associates people as food. However, gators seem to be a little bit more docile than crocodiles when it comes to their nature so they would rather run away or, or not be as quick crocodiles are tend to be a little bit more quick and, and, and aggressive but um it just depends on the individual more than it is it depends on the species and whether they have had experience with people before or not. Mm -hmm. but most alligators and crocodiles that see people around and they've never seen them before they'll try to get away because they don't want to have anything to do with them okay can you tell us about how snakes lay eggs 
So not all snakes lay eggs. There are groups of snakes that actually give birth to live young. The most famous one are the, are the garter snakes, which are actually commonly kept as pets. Um, there are also the pit vipers, which are the, the common venomous snakes that we have here in this part of the world, and they give birth to live young. All the other ones give birth, uh, or none give birth, they lay eggs. Um, and they just lay them just like any other animal that lays eggs. They just find a spot that's good for them, and, and the eggs are protected, and they'll lay them, and then they'll leave. They actually do not take care of their young at all, or mm -hmm. their eggs at all. Uh, there are only a few species of snakes that do so, and we don't have any here, here in the States. Okay. All right. Um, Miss Haley, could you tell us about um, the shape of a snake egg? Is it going to be like a turtle egg, or not a turtle egg, excuse me, but a chicken egg? Um, it's almost similar, but a little bit more elliptical, so almost like a rounded rectangle. I would say. Um, so not exactly, but that might be the best frame of reference for you. Okay. It's smaller. All right, thank you. And they're gonna be a little softer too, right? Mm -hmm. They're not quite as hard or brittle as a chicken egg. Um, we've got a quick question about um, what alligators eat and also what did turtles eat? Miss Alyssa, would you like to address that for us? Yeah, um, so alligators are gonna be carnivorous. So they're going to be eating um, the things that they can encounter in the pond, whether it be fish or turtles or even um, animals that stop by to drink out of the pond. So in our area, we have a lot of raccoons, rabbits, possums, deer. Um, so they're pretty opportunistic, which means if there's something available and they can get to it and it's meat, they're gonna eat it. Um, with turtles, it does depend on the species of turtle, but most of the turtles that we find in this area are going to be omnivorous, which means they're gonna eat a combination of both plants and animals. So for example, our yellow-bellied slider here would be eating maybe some pond plants that it can get a hold of, but it would also eat insects that it can find in the pond, um, as well as small fish, maybe um, worms or things that it could dig up from the ground as well. Okay, um, how can we help out our sea turtles? Oh my goodness, love that question. Um, there are lots of things that you can do to help sea turtles, and in the interest of time, I'll only give you a few. Um, one really big thing that we can do is just learn more about them. Um, by learning more about an animal and knowing um, how it's doing out in the world or sharing with our friends um, the things we've learned about those animals, we can really make a big difference in how much people care about and want to protect those animals. Um, another thing that we can all do pretty easily is swap out single-use plastics in our daily life. Um, so what that means is you might find yourself going to a restaurant and they give you a plastic straw or a plastic fork and knife to eat your food with. Or you might be thirsty and go to the grocery store and grab yourself a plastic bottle of water. So even though we don't intentionally throw that stuff in the ocean, as it breaks down, there is a chance that it makes its way into the ocean. And that's one of the biggest threats to our wildlife in the ocean, especially sea turtles, is that plastic that makes its way into the ocean. So by stopping using those things altogether, using a reusable straw or water bottle, bringing your own fork and knife or using a reusable grocery bag, those are some things that you can do that will help our marine wildlife. Um, one other thing that you can do if you're really, really interested in helping sea turtles specifically is if you go somewhere in the summertime to a beach, you can join what are called sea turtle patrol groups. So these are groups of volunteers who will actually walk the beach early in the morning to find if sea turtles have laid nests, and then they will take steps to protect those nests and make sure that people don't mess with them, that animals don't mess with them, and that when it comes time for those baby sea turtles to hatch, there's actually someone around watching to protect and help them have the best chance possible to make it to the ocean. Um, so there are lots of different ways that you guys can help sea turtles. Um, thank you for asking that question, um, but that's just a few. All right, um, so thank you for telling us about what uh, turtles also eat. Mr. David, could you tell us a little bit about what alligators eat? So Ms. Alyssa mentioned some of those things that they eat. Uh, something very cool here in, on our Barrett Islands that alligators don't usually eat in other places since we are surrounded by salt water and um, we have the marsh right next to us, we have a high population of blue crabs. And that's actually our logo for St. Uh, Camp St. Christopher's Barry Island program. It's the blue crab. You can see it right here if you've never seen one. Uh, now blue crabs are saltwater animals and the gators actually go into the marsh, which is actually estuary water, which is the mixture of fresh and salt water, and they go hunting for some blue crab. And that's something that's specific to an area like this because in other parts of the world where alligators live, like 
the swamps of Louisiana or um, the swamps of Florida, there aren't going to be any blue crabs there. Um, are there any other animals here on our barrier islands that eat blue crabs regularly besides little alligators? Absolutely. All sorts of animals that live in this area depend on the blue crab for a snack or even food source. So anything from dolphins to sharks to alligators to any birds that, that will go onto the marsh to eat, like great blue herons, um, ospreys would even get some. Um, Miss Alyssa, you have another one? People. People, of course, yes. <laughs> Yes, you gotta love those blue crabs. Mm -hmm. All right, friends, um, we are getting close to that being all the time we're gonna have today. For those of you whose questions we may not have been able to answer um, just yet, go ahead and uh, keep submitting those and we will get back to you um, with those answers. Um, and thank you also for tuning in. Please feel free to keep asking questions um, and commenting as this video is posted after it's live. Um, and we will get back to you. Also, keep an eye out because today we'll be proposing um, a herpetology video that's going to feature some of the animals that you did not get to see out here today. Um, some other turtles, snakes, and you'll also get to walk around with us um, as we explore here at Camp St. Christopher and look for other animals out here in um, our natural environment. Thank you once again for tuning in and please stay tuned in for other live videos. Um, have a wonderful day, everyone. Goodbye from our Barrier Island team. Bye.